Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. So the agenda for this particular lesson is, of course, to first talk about what is dynamic SQL, what does it mean? Talk about why and when you might use dynamic SQL. We'll talk about the different mechanisms for implementing dynamic SQL in PLSQL, nat mainly native dynamic SQL and DBMS SQL. We'll take a look at the four different methods of dynamic SQL and why they're of use to you. And then I'll review the topics in the series. So what is dynamic SQL? Well, let's first of all do a little parsing of that phrase, dynamic SQL. First of all, the SQL refers to the structured query language, which I hope you're all familiar with. That's another assumption of the class. But let's take a look at the word dynamic. In general, in the context of software, when you see the word static, what that means is that it's referring to an action that's performed or set at the time of compilation. And dynamic refers to an action taken when the application is running. So static equals compile time, dynamic equals runtime. Static SQL, which is also known as embedded SQL because the SQL statement is embedded right inside your PLSQL code, is an SQL statement that is completely specified and parsed at compile time. Dynamic SQL refers to an SQL statement that is not completely specified at compile time and therefore cannot be parsed until the time of execution. So there's something about the SQL statement. It could be the name of the table that you're working on. It could be the fact that it's a DDL statement that is not supported as native SQL in PLSQL. You cannot fully specify it and have the Oracle compiler pass it to the SQL layer for parsing at the time of compilation. Instead, it has to happen at the time of execution. Usually you need to get some information from your users to complete the SQL statement. So that's the basic difference between static and dynamic. That's what is meant by dynamic. You need the information to complete your SQL statement at runtime. Now, dynamic SQL actually refers to two, actually three kinds of statements in the context of PLSQL. The first is dynamic DML, which means data manipulation language. Officially, this includes select statements, deletes, inserts, updates, merges, and so on. Usually we use the word DML to refer to the change pro the change statements, delete, insert, and update. But officially, DML also includes select, so dynamic DML. Dynamic DDL, data definition language, statements like drop a table, create a table, create a procedure. The things that actually modify the structure of the database of your structures in your application. Dynamic DDL. And finally, dynamic PLSQL. So anonymous PLSQL blocks that are constructed, compiled, and executed at runtime. Here are some simple little examples of the difference between these. Dynamic DDL, I construct a drop statement, drop the specified type for the specified name. That's a DDL statement, and it's constructed as a string and then executed at runtime. And then dynamic PLSQL. Here's an example of an anonymous PLSQL block in which I use begin end and inside that call a procedure which is not named and not specified until runtime and then pass in a parameter list. In all cases when you're talking about dynamic SQL I'll be refer you could refer to any of these things mean any of these things dynamic DML, dynamic DDL and dynamic PLSQL but in all cases you're constructing and executing a string at runtime. What can you do with dynamic SQL and why should you use it? Well, first of all, you should only use it when you have to use it. If you can write static SQL, you should do it. It's simpler and it's at least a little bit faster, though the performance difference between the two is actually very small at this point. Generally speaking, what you're going to do with dynamic SQL is build ad hoc query and update applications. In other words, the user has to supply some information to you so that you can execute this, the statement and, and give them the data or change the data as they specify. So for example, you might provide a web page in which they can specify the columns that are a part of the where clause that, that retrieves the data they want to see. So that they don't realize it, but as they click on 
checkboxes or radio groups on the page. They're actually specifying the underlying query statement. And of course, you might need to change different tables in different ways dynamically. So generally speaking, the user decides what to do and what they want to see. You can also use dynamic SQL to execute DDL statements from within PLSQL. This is not allowed natively. In other words, I can write a select statement as embedded SQL. I cannot write a drop table statement as embedded or static SQL. Generally speaking, you can soft code your application logic. So instead of hard coding all of your business rules, for example, inside your code, you can put that code in a table. And then at runtime, pull the code out of the table, construct the procedure call or the function call or the expression or block, and then execute it. So in all cases, this is pretty much done by dynamic PLSQL, which is a fairly complex topic and less routine for developers, but certainly more and more common. And another nice thing about dynamic SQL is that you can avoid redundancies in your code. You might find yourself writing a very similar, not exactly the same, SQL statement over and over again. There might be a minor difference in the list of elements being selected or the where clause. And instead of having a large repeated SQL statement, you might have one expression made dynamic and then you pass in the variations. So it's a, it's a nice way to avoid a lot of extra bulk and repetition, making your code easier to maintain. Oracle offers two different ways to execute dynamic SQL inside a PLSQL program. First, DBMS SQL. This is a built-in package provided by Oracle, first provided way back in Oracle 7, and it was the only way until Oracle 8i in which you could execute dynamic SQL. It is definitely one of the largest, most complex of the built-in packages. It's something that is really not very much used anymore because of the new feature, native dynamic SQL. And I'll be talking about the usage of DBMS SQL in the advanced topics lessons and in Dynamic SQL Method 4. Native Dynamic SQL, NDS, was added in Oracle 8i, and it's a native implementation of Dynamic SQL. So essentially, you can write the, the statements to execute D Dynamic SQL statements directly in your code, usually almost always using the execute immediate statement, instead of having to call DBMS SQL programs, subprograms, to achieve the desired effect. And essentially it does almost all of what DBMS SQL, SQL can do, but much more easily and usually more efficiently. So 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, NDS, and specifically the execute immediate statement, is the way you're going to go when you're executing or implementing dynamic SQL operations. You can also, as a part of NDS, use cursor variables. I can open for a dynamic select statement and retrieve multiple rows of data that way. But in Oracle 9.9 and above, you can use execute immediate with the bulk collect statement to do that as well. So pretty much execute immediate will be the mechanism of choice for dynamic SQL in modern PLSQL languages. But there definitely are situations where you're going to fall back on DBMS SQL and be glad it was there. Well, to get a bit esoteric, there are four different dynamic SQL methods. Let's just pull them all up on the page. And I'll talk through each one of these. Now, it is fairly abstract stuff. Different methods of SQL, why do you care about that? Well, the bottom line is that if you understand the differences between these different methods and you correlate the kind of code you need to write for each one of those methods, then the next time you run into a dynamic SQL requirement, you can look at it and say, well, let's see, that that's a dynamic SQL method three. And because of that, I know that I'm going to be doing an execute immediate string with an into clause. So I'll go through each one of these. But the reason it's important to know is that it will help you guide yourself to the proper implementation more quickly and more reliably than if you were just starting from scratch, analyzing each dynamic SQL situation every time. So the four methods of dynamic SQL, from lowest to highest, from simplest to most complex. Method one. It's a DDL statement, so it create table, drop table, etc., data definition language, or a DML statement, by which I mean an insert, update, or delete, that does not contain bind variables. In other words, it's just a string. And in that case, you simply use execute immediate, specify the string, and you're done. It's the simplest form. Method two, DML, insert, update, delete, with a fixed number of bind variables. Now, I'll be talking about bind variables defining them, getting into all the details when we talk about method two 
But the basic idea is that I can take variable values in my program and bind them into my string with the using clause. So when you're executing updates, inserts, inserts or deletes, and you have to bind in those values, you specify the using clause, and that's method two. Method three, I'm executing a select statement, a query, with a fixed number of expressions in the select list. In other words, at the time I'm writing my code, I know that I'm going to select just two columns, a string and a number, or maybe 500 columns, all strings. But I know, and it's fixed, at compile time. And in that case, I use execute immediate and the into clause, just like select into or fetch into. Method four, the most complex of all, is a query with a dynamic number of expressions in the select list or a DML statement, update, insert, delete, with dynamic number of bind variables. In other words, at the time I'm writing my code, I don't know if my select statement is going to retrieve two values or a hundred values. Or if I'm writing an insert, update, or a delete, I don't know how many bind variables I might have to bind in. Two, ten, twenty? I don't know. Which makes my dynamic SQL statement extremely dynamic and it makes it very difficult, though perhaps not impossible, to use the execute immediate statement to achieve the desired effect. In this case, when you're facing a dynamic SQL method 4 situation, you're almost always going to be using DBMS SQL. So that's one of the first examples we'll see where DBMS SQL is actually the preferred approach. Then there's dynamic PLSQL. When I execute a dynamic PLSQL block, and I'm honestly not sure where it fits into these different method, methods 1 through 4, We'll be treating it as an entirely separate topic. So method one, DDL or DML without bind variables, just execute the string. Method two, bind in variables in the with the using clause. Method three, retrieve data into a set of variables, so I have an into clause. And method four, anything goes, anything could be happening, dynamic DBMS SQL. So what am I going to cover in the Dynamic SQL series? Well, you guessed it. Method 1 Dynamic SQL comes up next, executing DDL and simple DML. Then we'll take a look at method 2, essentially the using clause of execute immediate, the binding of variables into placeholders. Method 3, executing dynamic queries and all the variations possible there. Then we'll take a look at working with dynamic PLSQL, creating and executing anonymous blocks on the fly. And then we'll get to method four dynamic SQL, the most complex type, and we'll take a look at using DBMS SQL to get the job done. From there, we'll take a look at some more advanced topics in dynamic SQL, for example, executing very large strings, getting out information about the query that you, that your dynamic query, the different elements in the select list. And finally, well not finally, but we'll take a look at new dynamic SQL features in Oracle 11G, and finish up with best practices for dynamic SQL. So lots to cover, lots to learn, really excellent stuff in the modern world of the web-based environment in which you have a lot of dynamic aspects to your applications. So to conclude, dynamic SQL is a very common requirement in our applications. Way back when, when I started using Oracle, certainly you needed DBMS SQL now and then, but it wasn't a common thing. Today, because of all the variations in our application requirements, because we've globalized and, and universalized our applications over the internet, the applications require a lot more flexibility. DB, dynamic SQL is very common. And you get a tremendous amount of flexibility for our users and for ourselves, which of course you're going to be seeing as you explore the lessons, but it does also increase the complexity of our code. So there's a clear trade-off. And again, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to use dynamic SQL unless you really need to. But when you're aware of the different types or methods of dynamic SQL, the different mechanisms for implementation, and how to write the code for each of them, I think you'll find that in general, most dynamic SQL implementations are not that difficult to do. The most challenging part is putting together the strings correctly. But in terms of using Execute Immediate, you'll find it's a relatively intuitive and simple process.